and welcome to my latest neck diagram presentation. This time I've got some stuff um, already on the board here, and uh, and if you spell out the uh, letters of each chord, uh, it spells caged. And uh, if you've been playing for longer than five minutes uh, on guitar, you've probably heard of this this caged uh, concept. And so caged is a way of identifying the basic shapes of chords as they present themselves over the entire neck of the chord. So in other words, um, these five chords, C, A, G, E, and D, are shapes that will emerge for a single chord over the neck of the guitar. Uh, some people call these chords open chords. Other people call them cowboy chords. Uh, whatever it is that you call them, they're, they're first position open uh, chords. Open because they, they contain open strings. And they're fundamental to the guitar. They're easy shapes in comparison to um, a lot of other shapes um, or a lot of other chords over the neck. And, and traditionally, they're taught before um, either partially or in whole over a lot of other chords and shapes. And if if we arrange the, the chords in a certain way, we get this word. It's called caged. Um, but additionally, the order of the chords... Uh, as they move through the neck, end up going in this order. So it's a it's a good order, and it's um it's good that the word is spelled out that way, um just because it's an easy way to remember it. So I I do think this is a useful concept. Um, of course, if you conceptualize too much, then you're conceptualizing and not playing and making music. But um, but you know we we have to take time for both, and uh, you know and, and do what you got to do. Uh, if it doesn't interest you, then uh, hit the stop button. But anyhow, um, in the caged uh, scenario here, we're going to take C and find all of its notes all over the neck of the guitar. So I'm going to um, move that into the picture here by dragging these notes. And I'm going to be kind of superimposed on some of the ones in C and bring them to the forefront. So we can we can see here, um, I'm gonna just back out so we can see it again. We see where these notes are and then, so if I bring, the notes of C are C, E, and G. So if I bring them into the picture um, and then bring them to the front, we can see those same notes that we had here are part of the C chord. Now there are some extra C's, E's, and G's. Um, that's because you know we can't play all of the notes uh, at the same time. Um, and basically, uh, you know, I can play this open E or the G that's down here. They're both part of the chord. But um, finger position wise, this this is a little. This is the easiest version of. C to play, and also uh, chords, you know, a C chord is going to be played as its lowest note from C, so the, the even though E is part of the chord, um, that's generally left out as the low E because it's lower than the lowest uh, C. So in this case, um, the C, um, that that looks like a C open chord is is called C, so we can uh, um, we 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 can see the chord right here. If I take these notes away, we can see that the C chord is in the shape of a C chord, and then I'll I'll bring all these notes back. Now, where this concept comes into play um, is where, where we see what comes next. And, and what comes next, what I mean by that is, as we look up the neck here, we see this shape um, right here. I'm going to move the, select these and then move them over. We can see right here that this 
looks like what we know as the A chord. Now, these notes up here are different notes, but the whole the point of caged is to conceptualize and understand that the same shape that we know as A emerges as C slightly up the neck, and that happens um, right here. And if if we notice the C note uh, right here is the same C note that starts this chord, and we have all the same notes C, E, and G, but it's in now the shape of an A. And now um, we see these three notes in a row, and we see that on G here. So what what comes next? What comes next is this next chord, if we move it up here, we can see that it contains the same shape. Um, once again, these notes here are not C, E, and G, but what we're doing is we're referencing the same, um, the same shape. And because C, A, G, E, and D are all major chords, the same shapes are going to emerge for one chord, um, just in different areas of the neck. So now we have C that looks like a C, C that looks like an A, C that looks like a G. Um, and now it's quite simple. If, if we've understood that, um, now we've got C that looks like an E. And if I bring this up here, we can see where the same shape is but it's down here for C, but it it looks like this. That's the whole point of caged. And then finally, we have the D, which if I move it to a new grid, it's here. If I bring it up, we can see its relationship. And then, um, so so this is this is caged. Now for every chord, there's going to be this pattern on the neck. It's just going to emerge in a slightly different order. In C, it's the easiest one to make an example of is because C starts at the top of the neck and it goes in this order that we call caged. But you know, for A flat and uh, and uh, F and um, G flat and, and all the other chords. Uh, we have the same emergence of shapes in the same order, just in a different starting point. Hope that makes sense. I hope it adds a little bit of enlightenment to your fretboard um, theory. Play around with it. Uh, figure out how to play chords in different areas of the guitar. Um, and um, again, I hope it uh, helps you and enjoy. Take care. Have a great day.